What's going on guys? In this video, we're gonna go over uh, the absolute best financial tool that there is, and that is Excel. And if you don't have Excel, you can use Google Sheets, and you'll pretty much get the same results, especially for what we're, for what we're doing today. So we're gonna figure out how to find payment, or PMT. And I'm gonna make a whole mini series of uh, all of these little tips and tricks in Excel. Uh, just because it is a great tool to use, uh, but you need to know how to use it. So our goal is to find payment, right? And if we go to equals PMT, you can see right here, calculates the payment for a loan based on constant payments and a constant in interest rate. So what does this mean? This means say you take out a loan, right? And for the present value, uh, we'll say $50,000, okay? So it's gonna be $50,000. We're gonna go up here, make it uh, the accounting format. Years, let's say it's over the course of five years, all right? Maybe it's, uh, it's a car, you bought your dream car. And for the rate, whatever the rate may be, we'll, we'll say it's, uh, how about 3% or nah, what would a car loan be? Maybe 5%. So we'll say 5%. And then the future value. What's gonna be your future value? Well, you're gonna to wanna to have the car fully paid off, so it's gonna be zero. And I just made it, uh, again, accounting, so that's why I gave it the dash, because it's zero. So how do we figure out the payment? This, this can be very helpful if you're planning to buy a car, and depending on the interest rate, you wanna know exactly what your payment is gonna be every month. You wanna make sure that maybe the dealership isn't gonna screw you over, and uh, you know, make your year your years longer and it's actually gonna increase the payment, whatever. There's a million reasons why you wanna know what the payment is, but here's how you do it. So we're gonna go up to the FX right here. We can hit equals PMT, but you'll see why I'm gonna do the FX. We hit on FX, and most recently used, I only use really the financial calculator, but if you can't find it, go to financial, and then you'll have all of these terms. You wanna go all the way down to PMT. So you click on that, and again, right here, PMT, it shows you. We're gonna do the rate, the NPER, the PV, the FV, and the type. Calculates the payment of uh, for the loan based on constant payments, yada, yada. Let's click OK. And then this comes up, and this makes it very easy. It kind of walks you through exactly what to do. So the first thing it's asking for to figure out our payment is what is the rate? So the rate right here is 5%. So if we click on that cell, now we're not done with rate because if you look down here, rate is the interest rate per period for the loan. For example, use six divided by four for quarterly payments uh, for 6% APR. Now we're not paying once a year. If it's a car loan, we're probably paying once a month. And what that means is we take the rate, which is 5%, and we need to divide it by 12. So that will account for all 12 months in a year. Then we can move on to the, the NPER. NPER is the total number of payments for the loan. So the loan is gonna be over five years, or that's what we have in our example. So we're gonna click on that. And just like the rate, we need to account for every single month. So it's really gonna be five years times 12, the 12 months in each year. So we do multiplied by 12. That's going to be 60 payment periods. 60 divided by 12 is five years. Simple math, awesome. All right, now we're gonna move on to PV. So PV stands for present value, and you can see the total amount of the series of the future payments is now worth, so our present value is $50,000. So we're gonna click on that. We're done with that, it's nice and easy. And then we go to future value, Future value is going to be what it's going to be worth at the end. Uh, so right here, it's going to be zero. So we click on that. And the type, you don't need to worry about the type, not for something as simple as this. So you can leave that blank. And if we hit OK, here's our answer, $934.56. So the reason why this is great is now that everything has its cells, we could change this around. So maybe you're looking for something that's gonna be under $800. You want a car that's gonna be eight, under 
Maybe you need to extend the years. So what would six years be? 805. What would an interest rate of 4.5 be? Seven, here, hold on. There we go. 793, so maybe that's what you're looking for. So you could actually go in to a dealership and now negotiate or any loan. Maybe it's a business loan, maybe it's you're lending money from your friend, whether maybe it be a house, you can now figure out everything. So let's talk about a house now. Maybe you want a house for, I don't know, we'll say $250,000, okay? It's gonna be over a much longer period. Let's say a 30 year period and it's gonna be 3% interest. So now you can see, okay, great. If I'm getting a house for $250,000, it's going to be 30 years and the rate's going to be 3%. I'm paying $1,054 out of pocket uh, every month. What about if it's a 15 year? Okay, it's going to be $1,700. So now this allows you to play around with all of these numbers and really figure out what you can afford on a monthly basis. And what's even cooler is you could also use this for financial goals, not necessarily just to pay off money, but to reach certain goals in making money and in investments. It works the same way. So here's what I mean. Let's say your present value, we're talking about now a brokerage account. So forget about debt, we're not paying off debt anymore. We're now looking at our brokerage account. Maybe we have $1,000 in our brokerage account, very small amount, and for the years, Maybe, maybe we're 25 years old and we're looking to retire at, say we wanna retire early, we wanna retire at maybe 60, okay? So uh, what is that, 35 years, the interest rate, we're expecting 10% interest and we want our future value, this is the important part, we want our future value to be $1 million. We want to retire with a million dollars in the bank. And if we're starting with that 1,000. Now, now you may think you're done here, and there you go, you have your answer, $271.99. But here's the only problem. When a, you're looking for a payment like this, uh, one thing that you have to do, your present value, you need to make a negative, okay? And there you go, it's more around $254.79 a month. And I really don't want to get into the, uh, the intricacy of why, because I feel like I'll just confuse you at that point. But when you're looking to make money, um, you just have to make that first one a negative because pretty much that's negative and um, all of the payments that you are putting into it are technically counting as a negative as well. Uh, so that's just why you need that part to be negative instead of positive. If you make that positive, then it's technically accounting it as you have negative $1,000 that you're starting out with. It's just flip-flopped. So just remember, when we're talking about investing and how much we need to contribute to reach our goals, the present value needs to be negative. But if we're talking about paying off debt, the present value needs to be positive, okay? Little flip-flop right there, but this is it. So now you can really figure out, great, if I wanna retire, and I love playing around with this, if I wanna retire in 30 years, 35 years with a million dollars, which to me, that's still nowhere near enough, uh, but let's, let's pretend times were simpler and maybe I was alive in the 1960s where inflation wasn't so bad, then I know, great, I need to contribute $254 a month. What if I could find an investment that's 11%, only 193? What if I want to retire in 30 years? Okay, 347. So you could really start to play around with all these numbers and figure out uh, exactly how much you need to invest to reach certain goals or how much you'll be paying on payments when we're going the opposite way, right? $50,000 loan over the course of, let's say, six years, 5% interest, present value needs to be, uh, future value is zero. Okay, if I get a car for 50 grand, it's gonna cost me $805 a month with these two criteria. Uh, but that's that pretty much sums up how to find payment it's pretty simple. If you missed anything, just go back, rewind the video and watch again. Uh, if I didn't cover anything, you could drop a comment below and I'll answer. 
you liked this or if you want to see something else with Excel, again, drop a comment. I'll, I'll make anything with Excel. Excel is a great program. Uh, again, Google Sheets will work the same, but a lot of people don't know how to use this program. But other than that, like this video, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Uh, we're going to dive into some more Excel stuff because it's a great tool for not only investing but also paying off debt. And as always, I will see you guys in the next one.